Welcome one, welcome all, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, no matter where you are, what time zone you're in, it's time for one thing, and that is some PBE baseball action. Thank you all for joining me. I am your host, AJ887, and I am joined once again by the incredible Moosey. Moosey, how are you doing today? Later. What was that? Nervous. One more time? I, I, I'm having a little bit of trouble hearing you. Uh-oh. Uh, I'm very nervous, very terrified. <laughs> very nervous. Yeah, I I'd imagine this is a this is a, a big big moment for you, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, this is our third straight World Series and fifth World Series in six seasons. Um, I'm this is the first time I have casted one, so everybody gets to hear me die on stream. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, we will uh, get into the games shortly here. I just want to see if I can kind of, uh, let's see here. Is everyone able to hear uh, hear both of us okay? Uh, I just want to make sure that the audio levels are okay. It's, it looks good on, on, uh, on my streaming software, but uh, I want to double check. I think it, I think it might've just been my headphones. Um, <clears throat> ask the booth who is on Moosey Watch. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Looks like we're also dropping a few frames, so I want to make sure that this stabilizes before we get into the games. Which is a little bit concerning. Uh, audio is fine. Okay, perfect. All right. Well, I think we should be just about ready to get on into game here. Uh, hopefully we can get a few predictions going in the chat while we take a look at game number one of the Miners World Series. Now, uh, Moosey, you mentioned that this is your uh, this is the Kingpin's fifth World Series in six seasons. Uh, and what was it, third in a row, you said? Yep. Three in a row. Moosey, are you there? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think I think it was just an issue with my headphones, but now I think it should be good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this is actually going to also be the Lemur's third World Series in a row, if I'm not mistaken. Uh... No, the Lemurs have never made the World Series. Or sorry, yes, yes, th it's their third playoffs appearance in a row, but uh, it's it's yes. their first time in the World Series. Um, but neither team has won the World Series, so this will be a franchise first for somebody <laughs> at the end of this uh, at the end of this series. One team is walking away with the franchise's first World Series rings. It's either going to be the Kingpins or the Lemurs. So this will be a very interesting uh, playoff series here. Um, and then later on tonight, we'll also be watching the Apex and the Aviators taking uh, each other on in uh, competition for uh, the Majors World Series rings. So be sure to tune into that. Uh, I believe LBG uh, said, yes, yeah, 6 p.m. Eastern time uh, with... Rabid Sponge and possibly Hummus God as well. So be sure to tune into that tonight as well. Um, but without too much further ado, let's start talking about some of these uh, some of these squads. Um, the stat team uh, mentioned a couple of things here that were on playoff record watch for a couple of players. Um, Specifically, Lumpo Sullivan, the first baseman for the Louisville Lemurs, is actually one home run away from tying Cedric Winters for the most home runs in a single postseason with five. Uh, and Roxas is one win away from tying Bark Murley for the most wins in a single postseason with four. So we'll absolutely be keeping an eye on both of those two players throughout the series to try and see if they set those playoff records or tie those playoff records and then maybe surpass them as well. Um, doesn't look like we have a, um, a prediction going, so maybe I'll throw that up in the chat myself. Let me just take a Man, moment. I see all of these mods, but no prediction. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of mods in the chat, too. 
<laughs> I just glance over and I just see three mods and no prediction. Hmm? And making me do it. Curious. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. I gotta get the mod. Oh, view, stop, huh? t stop Twitch chatting and driving, please. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, Thomas, <laughs> what are you doing driving? They all Twitch chatting. Hello? Uh, predictions. Here we go. Um, uh, start a prediction, which will be who wins the first game of the World Series. We got lemurs and we got kingpins and we'll do a submission of one minute so we'll go ahead and start that prediction uh, and looking at the head-to-heads it looks like the kingpins do have a slight advantage over the lemurs here at least based on what the sim says you have five kingpins uh, to the two lemurs in terms of the head-to-head -head, and three ties in the five nine and pitcher position we have Mitch the T-Rex on the mound uh, taking on Stefano Chinapi um, for the first game of the series. And while the uh, Lemurs and Kingpins actually have faced uh, each other in 12 games in the regular season, this is, I believe, the first time that they're ever facing each other in the playoffs. Because the two previous times that the Lemurs went to the playoffs... Uh, they lost in the first round to the Swiss Steeds in season 25 and Kingston Mounties last season. Um, so this will be the first time ever that these two teams are facing each other in the playoffs, and it's for the first ever uh, <laughs> World Series for either team. <laughs> so <laughs> that's going to be an interesting one. Um, speaking of those 12 games in the regular season series, uh, Lemurs actually won the regular season series against Chicago, 7-5. to five. Chicago had a better batting average, um, but the Lemurs hit five more home runs than the Kingpins did in those matchups. Uh, Chicago starting pitcher Inker Bell was the main culprit, allowing four home runs in 16 and two-thirds innings pitching uh, when pit pitching against the Lemurs this season. Uh, on the Louisville side, poor triplet went 2-0 and while striking out 10.8 batters per nine innings against the Kingpins. And offensively, Atlas Gray was the best player on the field with a slash line of 319, 385, 447, all tops in the head-to-head -head matchups. Um, so these teams have faced each other quite a bit in the regular season, and Louisville had the edge. But Chat and The Sim both think that the Kingpins are going to have the edge in this game at the very least. Chat saying 77% 7 of the votes going towards the Kingpins for who wins the first game of the World Series, while 23% go to the Lemurs. All right, game one of the Myers World Series. You ready, Moosey? Do I have a choice? <laughs> Not really, but exactly. we're kidding. <laughs> nope. All right, so I'm guessing that you do have a preference for all of these series as to which two you're uh, going to want to take at the bat. How could you guess? <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a random shot in the dark, but we are going to get <laughs> underway, so I will take us in with the lemurs up to bat first here against Mitch, the T-Rex, the starting pitcher for the Chicago Kingpins. Here we go. Myers World Series Game 1. It's going to be exciting. Here's the starting pitch from Mitch the T-Rex, and that is grounded to the shortstop, and Chovy throws on to first for out number one, retiring Andy Myth. Ruben Ramirez will also go down on the ground out, this one on the left side as well, to Hayden Andrews. Jed Jaguar lines that out into right field. Uh, right fielder 43 senior uh, going back to take care of that. And we head to the bottom of the first with the Kingpins due up. Sax Justice will lead things off Stefano Chinapi on the mound for the Lemurs. He will watch a ball four go as he will take a lead off walk. He is off and running for second base. Gets there easily. Radiance Ham stepping up. Gonna pop one out to the catcher in foul territory for the first out. That'll bring Hudson Lane. The ball does get past the catcher. Justice moves over to third. Oh, the ball gets past the catcher. It's a drop strike three. Runner does not advance, and there are two outs for Shumi Hulkenbettel. Hulkenbettel going to fly one out into left field. Good catch out there. Strands that runner on third base. We are scoreless going top of the second. And it's going to be a clean up, 
cleanup hitter Lump O'Sullivan do up here. He's going to ground out to the first baseman Radiance Ham, who throws on to Mitch the T-Rex, covering first for out number one. Ditto McGee, high fly ball into right. That's going to be taken care of by 43 senior Miles Burrow. Goes down on strikes, and that is a quick 1-2-3 inning for Mitch the T-Rex on the mound. Uh, we head to the bottom of the second. Still no score, still no hits for either team here in Chicago. Designated hitter Atlas Gray will step into this one. Going to hit one over to the shortstop. Good throw there. Will be the first out. This will bring up shortstop and Kobe. Going to fly one in to center field. Good range out there by Ramirez. Will bring that in for the second out. Rookie Hayden Andrews steps in. Will ground one over to the second baseman. Easy throw to first. A quick 1-2-3 inning for Chinapi. Both teams were slugging. In the previous round, looks like this might be a pitcher's duel. Someone mentioned the BNN scoreboard, so I will go ahead and get that out of the way. I just realized that was still up there. <laughs> uh, we head back into the game in the top of the third. It's going to be Forrest Gump, the catcher. He's going to ground it to the third baseman, thrown on to first in time. Andrews over to Ham for out number one here. Long fly ball by Barry Bonds. All the way back to the warning track is Hudson Lane, but they make the grab. Kyle Eliason grounds that to the shortstop over to first. And a 1-2-3 inning as the Lemurs don't get any hits here in the top of the third. We head to the bottom of the inning with Chicago due up again. Donnie Applegate, the catcher, is going to ground with shortstop. Shortstop makes the stop, dives and throws and gets him out by half a step jose 43 senior wow. is gonna go long into right field don't think about his name too hard everybody <laughs> he just put the kingpins up one nothing in game one of the world series top of the lineup now sax just is gonna grab one to the pitcher good throw there gets that second out it'll bring up the first baseman radiance ham he'll strike out Swinging, but Chicago does score that first run and will take a 1 nothing lead. And that'll be 43 seniors' first home run of the postseason, putting Chicago up here. Myth is going to ground out to Sacks Justice, and Ruben Ramirez will follow up with a line out right to Anchovy. Back to back outs here, and it's Jet Jaguar who <laughs> flies out to Hulkenvettel for the third out of the inning. Three up, three down for Louisville as the Kingpins still lead 1-0, heading into the bottom of the fourth. Part of the lineup here, Hudson Lane buys one into left center. Left fielder does get on that one for that first out. Jimmy Holkenvedel going to ground one to the shortstop. Good throw there, gets that second out of the inning. We'll bring up Atlas Gray. Hits one down the line to third. Throw over, 1-2-3 inning for Chinapi. But it is still a one to nothing game. We will go top of the fifth, about the halfway point. And it's going to be Lumpo Sullivan. High pop fly. Second baseman takes care of that. Ditto McGee grounds that to first. He throws on to Mitch the T-Rex, covering the bag. Long fly ball by Miles Burrow. This one has a chance and it's gone! Miles Burrow going to tie this game up. First hit of the game for the Lemurs here in the top of the fifth and the first run of the game on one swing of the bat. 401 feet on the solo bomb. And now with the game tied, here is Forrest Gump. He's going to draw a walk. That's going to be a free pass issued by Mitch the T-Rex. Barry Bonds will get a base hit, and now it looks, looks like control is starting to be lost by the Chicago starting pitcher. As three batters face and no outs. Uh, Kyle Eliason, though, is going to fly out to right. And that will end the inning. So it got a little bit dicier there after the solo shot. But one run is all the lemurs can get across. It's a tie game here in Chicago. We have Anchovy going to fly one over into left field. McGee out there will bring that one in. That brings up Hayden Andrews. Going to pop one way high in the air in the infield. Second baseman calls out the shortstop to take that one. That will bring up Applegate. Applegate is going to drive one into left field, but it dies just at the warning track. It's still tied at one, heading into the sixth inning we'll see how deep these starters go leadoff hitter andy myth ground out to the third baseman for out number one here in the top of the sixth 
Ruben Ramirez will take the walk and head on down to first base. Jet Jaguar, base hit into left field, and now we have first and second for Lump O'Sullivan, the first baseman from the Lemurs. Grounded to the first baseman. Nice snag by Radiance Ham, who throws on to second for out number one, and throws and they throw back on to first for the double play. Three, four, three, I believe it was, as we head to the bottom of the sixth. We'll say 43 senior. He's gonna drop one into left field for a leadoff single. Currently has the only two hits in the game for the Kingpins. Dax Justice is gonna strike out swing and choppy's pitch count is climbing a little bit here. Strike three called, they're gonna throw. Oh, and it's a strike him out, throw him out, double play. Man, 43, those old legs can't get him to second fast <laughs> enough. It's gonna be Diddle McGee do up here, grounding out to the second baseman for out number one. Miles Burrow, the third baseman, high fly ball into right center field. Hulk and Vettel ranges over to make the catch. Forrest Gump will get that one past the second baseman, and that's a base hit, so with two outs in the inning here, the Lemurs do have a man aboard. Barry Bonds will fly that out into left field, the shortstop Chovy running all the way back out, almost meeting up with the left fielder there to make the grab. Uh, still tied at one as it's time for the stretch. Or triplet will take the mound here for the Lemurs facing Hudson Lane. Lane's gonna shoot one up the middle for a leadoff single. And we'll bring up the hot hitter, Shumi Hulkenbettel. He's going to hit one hard out into left center field, but it just doesn't have distance to get out. Center fielder will grab that one. I'll bring up Gray. Ground one over to short. It's just going to be a fielder's choice. They couldn't make that turn. Oh, the ball gets away from the catcher. Another pass ball here. Brings up Anchovy. Anchovy's going to drive one down the left field line, going all the way to the corner. That's going to score a run. Kobe in with a two-out double. Scores Gray, putting the Kingpins up two to one. Andrews grounds one to the first baseman, who will take it himself for the third out. Just six outs here for Louisville to come back and maybe tie this one up. They'll have the top of the eighth and the top of the ninth to do it. Eliason getting them started off well with a single into right field. Andy Myth, high fly ball into center field, but it doesn't have the range to leave the park. It will be a fly out as Hoping Vettel takes care of it. Ruben Ramirez draws the walk, and now we have first and second with one away. It's Jet Jaguar, the right fielder. Right three. He's going to go down looking on strikes. Now with two outs and two runners on, it's Lumpo Sullivan. Base hit into right field. This could score a run. Round third headed for the plate. Safe at home is Eliason. And now the game is tied back up two to two. First and second with two outs for Diddle McGee. High fly ball into center field. And ranging over his Hulk and Vettel, he's gonna reach up and take care of that one for out number three. Game now tied at two. We head to the bottom of the eighth. Chicago looking to break the tie once again. Poor triplets staying in this one. Gonna face Applegate, gonna ground it over to the second baseman. Toss to first for the first out. They'll bring a 43 senior who's gonna strike out swinging. Lineup will turn over. Lead off hitter Sax Justice with two outs. Gonna hit one hard. Wow. That one's over into left field, and that one is gone! 414 feet by Sax Justice puts Chicago up by one. Absolutely. What a game this is! Absolutely crushed. Radiance Hands get a ground way over to the third base to for the third out. Louisville has three outs remaining in game one. Can they tie it back up here? Milesboro grounds out to shortstop. Chovy on to first for out number one. Forrest Gump base hit into right. Lemurs aren't quite done yet. Runner on first. One away for Barry Bonds, the DH. That's going to fall in front of the right fielder, and now we have two runners aboard for the Lemurs. Runners in the corners with one away, Kyle Eliason. That's gonna get past the catcher. Bonds advances to second, and Gump will score to tie this game back up to three. Andy Myth with a runner in scoring position and one away. High fly ball into right, taken care of by 43 senior. No advancement by Barry Bonds. Andy Myth, 
High fly ball into left center field. All the way back to the warning track is the lane, and they make the catch. So with a tie ball game, we are in walk-off territory in the bottom of the ninth for the Kingpins, or else we're going to extras. This game is absolutely crazy. Salami Tsunami coming in to try to hold this lead, facing Hudson Lane. Lane's going to grind one over to the second baseman for the first out. He'll bring up Polk and Vettel. Pitch in from Salami. Polk and Vettel going to fly one out into center field. Center fielder will make that catch. So they'll bring two outs for Atlas Gray. Gray's going to pop one up into the infield. Shortstop will make the catch. And <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go to extra innings here in game one. Unbelievable. Game one of the World Series. We already have extra innings. Top of the 10th coming at you. Ruben Ramirez with a base hit into left. Uh, it apparently went as an error against Hudson Lane. That was kind of a weird animation on my end. Uh, Jet Jaguar would get a base hit into center field, and now he runners at the corners with no one out for Lump O'Sullivan. Grab back to the pitcher. Pitcher throws on to second for the fielder's choice. One away here for Diddle McGee. Grounder second, over to second for one, back over to first, and a double play will end the inning. Lemurs get a man all the way to third base with no one out, and they can't get him across. Game is still tied 3-3 as we head to the bottom of the 10th. Anchovy facing Tsunami in the second inning of work. Chovy is going to take a walk. Winning run stands at first base. Chovy's going to take off for second. Will be safe. Frank Peyton Green. Andrews strikes out swinging. Bring up the catcher, Donnie Applegate. And that wow. one is long gone. Applegate walks off game one in the bottom of the 10th with a home run to right field. Wow. Kingpin will take game one. This is set to be an amazing series, I can already tell. And what a way to end it, too, with a two-run walk-off bomb. Wow. There's the batting. Taking a look down at the pitching decisions. We have multi alo Pele getting the win and the blown save for Chicago. Salami Tsunami taking the loss for Louisville. Uh, neither starter gets a decision, but they both had excellent days on the mound with six innings of one-run ball apiece. And Mitch the T-Rex will get credited with the player of the game. Uh, very, very comparable performances, though, with Chinapi. So both starting pitchers, great way to start off the World Series. Yeah. Wow. Let me go ahead and pay out the prediction here. I see you're pulling out your hummus impression already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just really excited for the World Series, that's all. <laughs> Kingpins win, so that's the prediction. And we're going to take a look at the uh, at any changes needing to be made. Uh, rotation, absolutely, Davey. Let me take a look here. Um, rotation, Roxas, Chinopi, and Junk Ball. Uh, doesn't show... I, I guess... I guess they were all at 100% for stamina uh, going in, but we'll take a look. Uh, Roxas is 100%, Chinopi is at 0, and Junk Ball is at 100%. Swap Roxas and Junk Ball, absolutely. Alright, so Roxas will be starting the next game, just to confirm, correct, uh, Lemurs? Is you want Roxas starting the next one and then Jeremiah going after that. Okay, cool. All right, uh, Moosey, as the as the GM of the Kingpins, uh, is there any changes that you want to make prior to the uh, prior to game two? Uh, we can also take a look at the um, at the team if that helps. Yeah, I'm busy, so if if the team wants changes, it's gonna come from Dag. Okay, fair enough. I'm a little busy here. I can't think about that. <laughs> I don't know if Dag's on line. I see. Looks like Dag is off. I know. I, I know he tries to avoid these games simply because his heart can't take it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like a, a Billy Bean scenario in, in Moneyball where he just tries to avoid them. 
Um, not seeing anything from DAG, so I'm going to ping in. <laughs> Enoch trying to make changes for the kingpins in chat. <laughs> Hashtag fire Enoch. While we're waiting on DAG, let's get prediction number two going. As to... Uh, Will the lemurs come back to tie? I'm pretty sure will they be, there will be no changes because there was no changes uh, in the last series that we had played. I don't think we've made changes at all. I don't even know if he's in that chat, to be honest. Uh, looks like he is. Okay. Usually he leaves me all alone and it makes me sad. <laughs> <laughs> but... Should be good to go. Just wait for this uh, lovely prediction to go through. Yeah, let me get the one minute prediction going. Will the lemurs come the back? Title. What was that? You gotta change the title of the stream. I absolutely do. Uh, I don't know Sorry. how I missed that. Playoffs day. Uh, will the season 27 Miners World Series? And we will also update the um, the stats at the bottom, or the uh, scoreboard at the bottom. All right, I'm not seeing anything from the Kingpin, so Moosey, I'm going to go to you for final word. Uh, we we good to move on to game two, or did you want to make any change? Just send it. <laughs> or send it? Full send? Full send. Okay. We'll see you later. <laughs> Fair enough. All righty. We are headed into game number two, then. As we take a look back at the... Uh, oh, we got to actually finish today. And... We will be seeing Inker Bell taking on Roxas here. Um, it looks like actually the lemurs and the kingpins head-to-head -head has uh, changed a little bit here. Um, we now see four to four with two ties. So the lemurs uh, gain a little bit of ground in the head-to-head -head there based on the last... Uh, uh, quick sim to the end, Enoch? No, <laughs> no, that's not my job. <laughs> <laughs> do it <laughs> oh man so for world, so for, this is uh, the Kingpin's third world series in a row and I gotta think uh, <laughs> I gotta ask the question since Enoch's in the chat I gotta think that uh, you're kind of thankful that it's not against the Hepcats again <laughs> based no, on that... previous <laughs> world series against the Hepcats no, that's curse. That's a curse series. <laughs> <laughs> I I have accepted those three losses to them, uh, but you know this is this is this is a different story now. So this is true. It's, uh... it, it's like, it's, see, like okay. This is it's like <laughs> the original trilogy of Star Wars, right? <laughs> They made a fourth film, and it was absolutely awful, horrendous. We don't want to see that. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. Fair, fair enough. Oh, well, well, and then next thing you know, it's it's up to nine, and then <laughs> maybe more than that. But right now, it is perfect as is. I We will accept these three losses. Hepcats <laughs> uh, did some great work, but right now, it's just focusing on the series. It's true. Kingpins and the Lemurs. Game two of the Myers World Series. Looks like the chat is in favor of the Kingpins winning game two and taking a 2-0 lead. 87% of the votes are headed that way, despite more people actually saying that the Lemurs would win. So a couple of big spenders on uh, on the side of the Kingpins voters. High rollers. Yeah, we got the high rollers in here. <laughs> Uh, Curse of the Crystal Skull says Van. For Dan, what are you talking about? 
that's not a movie that exists. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they making like another Indiana Jones or something like that? Didn't wasn't there something? Did I hear that they were making? Never mind. Enough about Indiana Jones and, <laughs> and trilogies. We we got a we got a World Series to get to. Yeah. Something to note: both teams have MVP front runners on them. Andrew Myth and Anchovy are the proposed uh, front runners for MVP this season. And both are really doing well in the playoffs too. 325 hitting for Anchovy with a 793 OPS, while Andy Myth 369 with an OPS of 910 at the top of the Lemurs batting order. Uh, Andy Myth looks to be uh, the best hitting Lemur so far in the playoffs um, with the best average, uh, as does... Uh, oh, no, Anchovy looks like... Uh, Anchovy's second on the Kingpins so far in this um, in these playoffs uh, after Atlas Gray, who's hitting 327, just a hair above Chovy. But, uh, <laughs> bro, let's start the game, says Subby. Yeah. All right, how about it? We <laughs> going into let's game go. number two. <laughs> Here we go. Louisville Lemurs taking on the Chicago Kingpins. Kingpins are up one nothing in the series. And we are headed on in with Andy Myth leading off once again for the Lemurs against Inker Bell, the right-handed pitcher from Chicago. Grounder to short, over to first. And that is going to be out number one. It's Ruben Ramirez who will follow suit with identical ground outs to short. And Jet Jaguar will ground out to... No, he'll beat out the ground ball. That's going to be an infield hit for the speedy Jet Jaguar, who also takes off for second. And he turns that single into a two-bagger. Uh, in theory, I guess. Lump O'Sullivan, though, goes down on strikes. And despite the hit by Jaguar for Louisville, no runs across. We head to the bottom of the first for Chicago's first look at it this on the mound here. Sax Justice stepping in to lead things off. We'll ground one over to second. Ground ball out there for out number one. It'll bring up Atlas Gray. Gray's gonna launch one over into right and that one will be gone. Atlas Gray 402 foot home run into right field. Puts the kingpins up one nothing. One swing of the bat. We'll bring up Hudson Lane. Lane's going to sky one into center. Good grab out there by Ramirez for the second out. That'll bring up Hulk and Vettel. Vettel. Oh, and a dive by Ramirez. Saves a hit there. That'll be the third out of the inning. What a play. Ditto McGee will lead off for the Lemurs here in the second with a single to center field. Miles Burrow, the third baseman, with a runner on first and no one out. And fly that high into right center. Taken care of by Jose 43 Senior. One away now for Forrest Gump. And we got a routine fly ball to Hudson Lane. Ranges over and makes the catch. Barry Bonds. Fly ball into right field. So three straight fly outs uh, after the single by Diddle McGee will bring the Lemurs inning to an end. And we head to the bottom of the second with Chicago still leading 1-0. The first baseman, Radiance Ham, going to watch one go by. So that will be strike three for the first out. Hayden Andrews going to hit one. Second baseman range and far out there into right field. will make that catch for the second out. Number Anchovy, ground ball over to second. Toss to first. A so one, two, three inning for Roxas. who's being pretty efficient with those pitches. A lot of early count swinging. We go top of the third. It's going to be Kyle Eliason who goes down on strikes. That's strikeout number two on the day for Inker Bell. And we head back to the top of the order with uh, Andy Myth. Who's going to also go down on strikeouts as Inker Bell racks up number three on the game. Ruben Ramirez hitting 265, already over one on the day today. We'll make it one for two with a single into right off of Bell. Runner on first with two outs for Jet Jaguar. And that is going to be a fielder's choice as they throw on to second to retire Ramirez and retire the side. We head to the bottom of the third now. Still 
of the catcher, Donnie Applegate, who's going to lace a single opposite field into left to lead off the inning. He'll bring up Jose 43, senior. He's going to fly one over into left center. Ramirez back there to make the catch. Bring up Justice. Justice is going to fly one into right center field. The right fielder, Jaguar, will get there in time. Bring up Gray. Going to take a big swing and a miss for a strikeout. Just the leadoff single there. Roxas is pulling a little bit after that home run. <laughs> LPG says the uniforms are too similar. All I can tell apart are the pants colors. <laughs> uh, Love O'Sullivan <laughs> goes down on strikes for out number one here in the top of the fourth. Ditto McGee lines that right to the right fielder. Jose 43 senior not needing to move too much to put that one away. Uh, Miles Burrow will get a base hit, though, into straightaway center field. And now we have a runner on first with two outs for Forrest Gump. Lines that, grounds that to the third baseman, but an error will be ruled on Hayden Andrews, and Gump is aboard. Barry Bonds will draw a walk. And now we have the bases loaded with two outs for Kyle Elias in the shortstop. That's going to get to the second baseman, and it's going to be an error as Eliason knocks in a run here. Bases loaded, two outs still for Andy Myth. But a fielder's choice will end the top of the fourth. Lemurs do get a run off of a couple of errors by Chicago. And we head to the bottom of the fourth with the game tied at one. Hudson Lane going to drop one into center field for a lead off single. They'll bring up Shumi Hulkenvettel. He's going to get hit in the back. Ouch, jeez. Bauer, what did you do? <laughs> Radiance Ham going to grab it over the shortstop. Makes that stop. Probably saved a run there. Just going to be an infield single. They'll bring up Andrews. He's going to line a single into center field. That'll score a run. Runners hold up. It is still bases loaded. Nobody out for Chovy. Chovy's going to drive one up the middle. They're not going to send him. Just station to station here. Bringing in the runs off of singles. And they'll bring up Applegate. Applegate's going to line one. That one's going to go all the way to the wall. Everybody's chugging around the bases. He's going for three. Applegate with a double advances on the throw. Clears the bases now, and there's still no one out. PM Shram steps in as the new pitcher, relieving Roxas in a single by Jose 43 Senior. We drive in Applegate from third. They'll bring up Justice. He's going to drop one over into right field. Holding it up at second is 43 Senior. They'll bring up Gray. Gray's going to strike out swinging. That is the first out of the inning. Hudson Lane. The double steal. And they are both safe. Two runners in scoring position. One out for Lane. Lane's going to ground one over to third baseman. Holds the runners up. And gets that out at first. They'll bring a Hulk and Vettel. Hulk and Vettel is going to fly one out into right field. Field. Jaguar is there to make the play to end the inning. But that is a six spot by Chicago in the bottom of the fourth. Unbelievable inning by Chicago. Ruben Ramirez will go deep to answer them back. Ruben Ramirez saying, hey, uh, we need to start climbing this mountain. I'll put us <laughs> in contention there. Uh, solo shot. And now it is 7-2, 425 feet on the ticker. It's going to be Jet Jaguar. It's going to ground that past the second baseman. And Lemurs are looking to set up for a good inning of their own here. Lump O'Sullivan will watch as Jaguar takes off for second stolen bag for the right fielder from the Lemurs. And a foul out by Lump O'Sullivan will put the first out of the inning on the board. Taking off for, second, or for third is Jaguar, safe with a stolen base. Ditto McGee, long fly ball into left field. And here comes the throw for the plate. Yeah. Out at the plate is Jaguar. No sacrifice fly. That's going to go as a double play. 7-2 on the double play and 7-2 on the scoreboard still. Radiant's hand leading things off here will ground out to the second baseman. We'll bring up Hayden Andrews, going to squib one. Oh, the pitcher bobbles it. Can't make the play. That's an error on the pitcher, Shram. Chovy is going to watch one go by, taking that walk. It was on first and second. One out for Applegate. He's going to take a heavy hack. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Jose, 43, senior. 
flies one out into left field, dies just at the track. Good grab out there by McGee. Could have saved a couple of runs. Still 7-2. We go top six. Bell back to the mound, and Miles Burrow will welcome them back to the mound with a single into center field. Forrest Gump goes down on strikes, though, and that's going to strike out number five on the day for Anchor Bell through 5.1. Barry Bonds pop fly that out to Hayden Andrews for out number two. And now it's Kyle Eliason to face down new pitcher Al Capone, who gets Eliason to ground out to second for out number three. Still 7-2 Chicago. Leading by five, going into the bottom of the sixth. Top of the order here, Shram does stay in. Sacks Justice can take a four-pitch lead-off walk. Shram isn't finding the zone easily. And Justice is going to take off. He's going to steal second base. And he'll bring up Gray. Gray's going to pop one over to the right side of the infield. Pitcher does make that play and that throw. Runner has to hold up at second. Productive out here as Hudson Lane will ground out to second baseman. The ball gets past the catcher, and in comes Justice to score. Wow. A lot of catcher blunders this series so far. Holcomb Vettel is going to drop one into center field for a single. And bring up Radiance Ham. He will hammer one in to right field. Holcomb Vettel is going first to third. Will be safe on the throw. Aiden Andrews stepping in. Good pitch there. Gets him swinging. On a strikeout, Kingpins put up another run. It is now eight to two as we go top seven. Putting their lead back at six are the Kingpins. With Al Capone back on the mound to defend that lead against the Lemurs bats. Myth popped out and Ruben Ramirez strikes out. Now it's Jet Jaguar, the best hitting Lemur uh, in the playoffs right now at 390 average, and that will continue to go up as Jet Jaguar gets a single into left center field. Lumpo Sullivan at the bat, and Jaguar takes off for second. No, he's gunned down by the catcher. Donnie Applegate mows down Jaguar on the base paths. It's time for the stretch as we head to the bottom of the seventh with Chicago still up by six runs. Anchovy to lead things off, going to ground one over to the third baseman. Burrow makes a good strong throw to get that first out. Fujisaki is your new pitcher here, or at least probably not so new. Jose 43 Senior is going to wow. fly one out in the right wow. field, and that one will be gone. His second home run of the series, second of the postseason, extends the lead to 9-2 to two for Chicago. I'll bring up leadoff hitter Sacks of Justice, going to... Round one into right field for a single. Justice is going to take off. He will steal second with ease. Bring up Atlas Gray. The ball gets past the catcher. These catches just cannot catch. Bring up Gray. Gray is going to fly one out into right field. Jaguar is there to make that play. This game is we go top eight. Nine to two kingpins here in game two. It's going to be Lumpo Sullivan getting that just over the second baseman's head for a base hit to lead off the top of the eighth. Dino McGee will get a base hit as well. This one into center field. Now it's first and second very quickly from Miles Burrow against Al Capone. High fly ball into center field all the way back to the warning track is Holkenvettel who makes the grab. Runner advances to third. Now we got runners at the corners for four scump. Runner to second, over to second for one, back over to first, and that is a double play, 4-6-3. As the Lemurs get nothing after back-to-back -back hits to lead off the inning. We head to the bottom of the eighth, looking dire for Louisville at this point in this game. Hudson Lane leading things off. He'll grant one over to second base for the first out. That'll bring up Hulk and Vettel. And grab one over to the second baseman Shady Moore towards the base for the second out. Radiant Sam's going to grab one over to the third baseman. Good throw there. Gets him out. One, two, three inning by Fujisaki. We go top of the ninth, last chance for the Lemurs here in game two. It's going to be Barry Bonds leading off this inning, flying out into center field. Al Capone still pitching. Kyle Lyason grounds that one out to the second baseman. And now it all rests on Andy Myth. But a pop fly into shallow right field will end the game as the Kingpins get the second win of the series. Now leading two to nothing overall against the Louisville Lemurs.
And what a way to punctuate this second win with a six run fourth inning. Unbelievable offense by the Chicago Kingpins helping lead them to victory. Roxas takes the loss. Inker Bell gets their second win. And Al Capone gets their first save of the postseason. Inker Bell will be the player of the game with 5.2 innings of one earned run ball. All right. Take a look at the... Uh, playoff discord to see if there's any changes for either the lemurs or the kingpins nope oh, i don't know if you could have heard that but my dog is barking in the background so i go ahead and mute my mic while uh while that goes on and as soon as i mute my mic he stops barking <laughs> Uh, Moosey, any changes for the Kingpins? No. No. Okay. Everything's going fine so far. All right. Uh, waiting on the lemurs here to see if they want to make any changes. Jeremiah Junk Ball is scheduled to make the next start with a 95 pitch count. Go ahead and tag the lemurs. Uh, we'll get yep, both a... World Series are seven-game series. So first to four wins takes it. But we'll see if uh, both go to seven. That would be something. All right. We're going to say let it ride, so we will let it ride. Go ahead and finish off today. I just want to double-check the that there's no major scheduled games coming up, which I checked. Going, yeah, still not. okay. We're good. Um, yeah, oh, it's actually an uh, off day, mm -hmm. it's a travel day. So, we'll gotta go, go all the way to Kentucky, baby. <laughs> and I gotta fly all the way down there, uh, from Chicago. That should bring us to really probably took a bus, it's the miners. That's true, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a bus, bus trip. <laughs> All right. Will the Kingpins take a three-game lead? Yes, Kingpins win. No, Lemurs win. And submission period, one minute. You got a minute to get your predictions in for who's going to win game three between the lemurs and the kingpins. Um, so be sure to get those channel points uh, into the prediction. As we take a look at the head-to-heads, both of these teams uh, had a fairly similar way of getting to the World Series. Um, I, I think if both... Uh, let me see. Where's my, where's my stat page? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Both teams had uh, three to one first round playoff wins, followed by four to zero sweeps of the teams that had the first round buys, which is very impressive. Both teams that had the buys uh, were knocked out in sweeps, like upset sweeps by these two teams to get here. Um, the way each team won those games, though, was different with the Lemurs putting up a sparkling 1.46 team ERA and 80 innings pitched while the Kingpins batted an impressive 339 as a team and 301 at bats. We saw those bats uh, really take center stage in, the, in game two of the World Series here. Uh, getting to the World Series has been a total team effort, though, with 11 different pit pitchers earning wins in 14 postseason decisions between the two teams. So a lot of different pitchers uh, getting decisions over the first couple of rounds of the playoffs. Uh, Van is all in on the lemurs. <laughs> and we have uh, the submissions for the prediction being closed. 59% of the votes saying lemurs are going to take this one. While 41% are in favor of the kingpins. Uh with Cameron Grimes on the mound versus Jeremiah Junk Ball, we have uh, two uh, two fairly young pitchers, uh, 21 and 22 are uh, the ages between the two of them, and both of them having an ERA of around four, so fairly close. Um, 
in terms of the starting pitchers. So it makes you think that this game might be determined by the bats again. And if Chicago continues their hot streak with the bats, uh, this might turn into a 3 nothing lead in the series for them. Um, let's see. It's win-win. Either you go 3-0 or you get like 250 channel points. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough, Ben. All righty. Uh, I think we are about ready to get on into game number three with no changes for either team. Here we go. Moosey, you're going to take the uh, take us into game for this one with Jeremiah Junkball on the mound to face down your Chicago Kingpins starting lineup. Let's get it. Game three starts right now. Junk ball on the mound for the Lemurs. Sex Justice, the lead off hitter for Chicago. Gonna start us off with a single over the first baseman's head, dropping into right field. We have Atlas Gray. Gray's gonna ground over to the second baseman, a productive out as Justice makes it over to second base. Hudson Lane's going to ground out over the second baseman. Another productive out as now Justice stands on third. We have Hulk and Vettel. Hulk and Vettel's going to drive one down the left field line. Drops in front of the field. There will be held to a single. But Chicago gets things started early with one run. Readingsham is caught looking on a good pitch by Junk Ball. But Chicago does take a 1-0 lead. We talk about the Chicago Bats, uh, both in the playoffs in general and in the last game. They're already starting to show again here in Louisville. Andy Myth, though, will get on board with a single, and Ruben Ramirez will follow with a walk. So Cameron Grimes putting on the first two batters they face. That one's going to get away from the catcher as both runners advance. Now we have second and third with no one out for Jet Jaguar, who will also draw a free pass here against Cameron Grimes, and the bases are loaded with no one out for Lumpo Sullivan. Grounder to first, over to second for one, and they're going to hold on to it. Fielder's choice will score a run, and now it's a tie ball game for Ditto McGee. Runners at the corners with one away. High fly ball into center field. It's going to be caught and immediately thrown to home. Taking off for the plate was Ruben Ramirez, but he gets gunned down by Hulk and Vettel, and that will bring us to the second inning with a tie ball game. What a throw by Shumi. Hayden Andrews start things off here. He will strike out swinging. That will bring up the shortstop and Chovy facing junk ball. Chovy's going to ground one up the middle. Gets himself a single. Bring up Applegate. Chovy is off and ready for second base. Will be safe with a stolen base. Applegate takes the full count walk. Runners on first and second with one out for Jose 43 senior strikes out swinging lineup turns over for sax justice who will also strike out swinging good way to get out of that little bit of a jam by junk ball keeping the game tied at one we head bottom of the second Cameron Grimes back on the mound to face down Burrow Gump and Bonds Burrow will line that down the left field line is taken care of by Hudson Lane. Forrest Gump grounded first, and Ham will take it himself for out number two. Barry Bonds, the DH, with the bases pat as empty, and two away will ground out to third. So a quick one, two, three inning for Cameron Grimes. We head to the top of the third now. Game still tied at one. Atlas Gray, the designated hitter, stepping in, will ground one over the shortstop. Shortstop holds on to it. Won't make the throw. It'll be an infield single for Gray. Single up the middle by Lane. Just going station to station here. Gray thought about going to third. Hulkenvelle is going to sky one into left center. Center field that catches it shallow enough not to get the runner moving to third. Radiant's hand's going to ground one over the first baseman. Just going to take the runner out at second on the fielder's choice. Ground ball to third by Andrews. We'll get that third out of the inning. Junk Ball is playing with fire a little bit as the flamethrower with the name Junk Ball, but doesn't <laughs> let any runs score. Kyle Eliason is going to fly out straight away to Shumi Hulkenvettel. Andy Myth with a fly out of their own. This one to Hudson Lane. And with two outs on the base paths empty, it's Ruben Ramirez. 
Pop fly to the second baseman, Sacks Justice, who will take care of it for another 1 2 3 inning. Lemur sent down order with the score still tied 1 1. We head to the top of the bottom. Fourth. Bottom of the order here for the Kingpins. Chovy going to lead things off with a single. That'll bring up Donnie Applegate. Chovy is off and running. Going to be just safe at second base. Applegate's going to ground one to the second baseman. Gets that runner over to third. Just one out. Sack fly opportunity here. Not even needed as 43 senior grounds a single into right field. Scores Chovy from third. That'll bring up Justice. Justice is going to line one up the middle. 43 Cedar going first to third on the hit. Runners on the corners now with one out. A ground ball bumped in front of the first base. The pitcher throws it and gets Justice out at second. Bring up Lane. Lane grounds over to shortstop. Good throw there. Gets the third out of the inning. Chicago does take a one-run lead. We go bottom of the fourth. Let's see if Louisville can answer. It's going to be Jet Jaguar first up. And a high pop fly on the pitcher's mound. And Chovy takes care of it, though. Lompo right. Sullivan goes down. Strikes, and now it's up to Doodle McGee with the base is empty and two away. Cameron Grimes seems to have settled down a little bit since that first inning. And a grounder to short over to first. Will be another 1-2-3 inning. We head to the top of the fifth now with Chicago still leading 2-1 here in Louisville. Hulk and Vettel lead things off. He's going to fly one down the left field line. Going for a lead off double. Just gets there in time. Throw. Bring up Radiance Ham. He's going to hit one over to the third baseman. Forces Shumi back to the second base bag. We'll bring up Hayden Andrews. Andrews is going to crowd one into right field. Shumi is being waved around. He goes for the dive and he will be safe at third. I'll bring up Chovy. Chovy, big swing there. Strikes out swinging. I'll bring up Donnie Applegate. Applegate's going to line one hard, but the right fielder barely has to move to grab that ball. Another run scored by Chicago is now 3-1 to one as we hit the halfway point of the game. Go at bottom five. It's going to be Miles Burrow up here who grounds out to the shortstop Chovy for out number one. Cameron Grimes deals to Forrest Gump, who grounds that over to second. Sacks Justice put, retires Gump. It's Barry Bonds, the DH, will do the same exact thing. Sacks Justice getting a little bit of arm work in there, uh, throwing on to first for two of the three outs here in the bottom of the fifth. We head to the top of the sixth. Still 3-1 Chicago. Team Schramm is stepping in here, pitching. Jose 43 Senior flies one out into deep left field. Dies just in front of the track. Zach's Justice is going to drop one into left field. Fielder gets there in time to hold him to a single. Atlas Gray called out on strikes. Bring up Hudson Lane. Justice off and running for second base. He will be safe. Lane's going to grab one over to the second baseman. Throw there for the third out. Shram gets through this one, leaving the Kingpins scoreless. We will go bottom of the six. Louisville needs runners. They won't get it from Kyle Elias in this inning as he goes down on strikes. Falling to 0, and 0 for 2 on the day. Andy Myth, 1 for 2 on the ball game. We'll line that down the right field line. Caught by Jose 43 Sr. Ruben Ramirez grounds that to the first baseman and... Radiance Ham will step on the bag with plenty of time in order to get the runner. 3-1 Chicago still as we head to the top of the seventh now. Poor triplets stepping in as the new pitcher of the game facing Hulkenvettel. Hulkenvettel is going to fly one into right field for the first out. Radiance Ham going to fly one into center field for a single one out, runner on first for Hayden Andrews. He's going to strike out swinging. I'll bring up Chovy. Chovy's going to ground one to the first baseman. Takes it himself to the bag for the third out. Another scoreless inning here for the Lemurs pitching. He's got to hope the bats bring them up. Bottom of the seventh, Jet Jaguar. He's going to line a right to... Uh, 
sorry, Lumpo Sullivan flies out to right field for out number two. Ditto McGee, high fly ball into center field, and that's going to be a quick 1-2-3 inning. Lemurs unable to get any hits since the first. We head to the top of the eighth now. Chicago still leading 3-1. We're going for the second inning of work facing Applegate to start things up. Applegate will swing through one for a strikeout. I'll bring up Jose 43 Senior. Watches one go by. It's strike three. Another strikeout here for Triplet. That will bring up Sacks Justice. He'll fly one over into left field. McGee is there to make the catch. One, two, three inning. For the lemur as we go bottom of the eighth. It's going to be C.O.C. multi -O -O Pele. I can never pronounce that one right. <laughs> Coming in to pitch for the Kingpins. Quickly retiring Burrow on the ground out, but allowing Forrest Gump to get on board on five-pitch walk. Barry Bonds will ground into a double play, though. 4-6-3. Louisville get a walk, but nothing else here. Heading to into the ninth, still down two runs. Triplet going for a third inning here. Gets Atlas Gray looking. His fourth strikeout of his game. Stay. That'll bring up Hudson Lane. Lane's gonna swing through one. That's another strikeout for Triplet. Up steps, hot hitting Shumi Hulkenvettel, trying to get as much insurance as possible. For this one. Fumi's going to line one into center field for a two out single. We'll bring up Radiance Ham. Salami Tsunami steps in as the new pitcher. Ham watches ball four go. Runners on first and second now. Two outs for Hayden Andrews. Ball gets away from the catcher. Runners move up a bag. Andrews will take a walk. It is bases loaded. Two outs. Top of the ninth here for Ann Chovey. Chovy's going to hit one hard, but it is right at Ramirez in center field, saving a bunch of runs there. We go bottom of the ninth. Louisville needs two to tie, three to win. It's going to be Kyle Eliasson leading them off with a single into center field. Viewers need to either tie it or walk it off here. Andy Myth is going to fly out to center field. Beautiful play by Hulk and Vettel. Diving catch. Ruben Ramirez will get a single into left field, and now we have first and second for Jet Jaguar. Lines that to the shortstop. Over to second for one. Over to first, and the Kingpins will take a 3-0 lead here in the World Series. Best of seven. Taking down the Lemurs 3-1 in Louisville. Game number three. And, I mean, we talked about the Kingpins bats uh, versus kind of the lemurs pitching lemurs had a really good uh era from their starters going into this uh into the series uh it seems like the kingpins bats are are prevailing a little bit here over the louisville arms is uh but the lemurs really struggled on the hitting here only mustering three hits total against chicago's pitching grimes will get the win going seven innings giving up only one hit one run and two walks while multi alo Pele will get the two-inning shutout save, their fourth of the postseason. Jeremiah Junkball takes the loss for the Lemurs, and now Louisville's backs are up against the wall with down 3-0 in the series. Cameron Grimes will be your player of the game with an excellent starting pitching outing for the Kingpins. And if you're a Kingpins fan, you gotta you got to be pretty happy about that. But if you're a Lemurs fan... You're starting to get pretty worried here. <laughs> we'll go ahead and finish off today and take a look for any changes that need to be made while hopefully we get a prediction going. Uh, I was talking with uh, my name is James in the chat for uh, um, talking about predictions. and I think uh, he'll be taking care of them from here on out, hopefully. Uh, Moosey, any changes to the kingpins? No. All right, let it ride. Uh, I will go ahead and ping the lemurs and see if they have anything they want to say. Go ahead and update the score.
scorer at the bottom of the stream as well. So 3-0 Kingpin's lead right now in the World Series. This is an exciting series though. Um, as, let's see, Lemurs want to look at the lineups. There you go. It's an exciting series though. It's, it's uh, really, really close game one. Game two was kind oh, of yeah. a runaway. And then game three... Game three got scary at the end. It did. Oh. It really did. Uh, okay. Let's see. Davey, I think, is looking over the lineup. Yes, Kingpins did take the 3-0 lead, Dom. Thank you. All right. Lemurs are letting her ride, so we have both teams with no changes. Going into game number four. All right. Uh, let's see. I just wanted to make sure something real quick. All right. New prediction uh, will be coming up shortly as the Kingpins uh, did indeed take a 3 nothing lead for the previous prediction. And we will have the starting pitchers from the first game back on the mound. Mitch the T-Rex versus Stefano Chinapi. Regular season stats are on the board there. 4.44 ERA for Chinapi, 3.96 for Mitch the T-Rex, but both looked really good going six innings and only giving up one run in game number one uh, in case you missed it. So this is uh, this is going to be another uh, pitcher's duel potentially with both of these players uh, really looking good on the mound in game number one. Prediction is up, so make sure that you get your channel points in. Will the Kingpins complete the sweep? Or will the Lemurs hold on with a win here in game number four? What do you think, Moosey? I, I know we've kind of been kind of been avoiding uh, talks about how you're feeling about this series, but uh, we got to start talk, <laughs> talking about it. How, how's it. how are you feeling right now? I don't think we we've never. I, I, I it's been a while, so I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure we've never led in the World Series past like game two. So it's like maybe sometimes we took game one or something like that, but this this is a whole new experience for me after <laughs> losing so many already. Um, but uh, lemurs have really kind of underperformed a lot through um, the regular season, hence why they dropped so far uh, down the uh, the standings. We thought that the lemurs had a good enough team to really pull out a division win. Um, that didn't end up happening, but they're a really strong team. They have a lot of really good players. Uh, they they just got to wake up and get get hits in the right spots and, but it's it's really this entire series has is just a series of seven coin flips just got to win four of them it's true it's very so. true <laughs> uh i wanted to go back and take a look uh real quick i i went back in the index just now uh to see how many world series sweeps we've had um there has been four in the history of the minors. Uh, the most recent one being actually yep, last I season. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I didn't hear the didn't, the, mean to, didn't mean to do the, that. But. The most recent one after that was that really dominant Swift Steeds roster in season 21. Yeah, against they didn't lose the entire game. playoffs. You can't yep. do much better than that. <laughs> yeah, State College over San Bernardino. Uh, in the 2037 year, and then six years prior, back when there was only six teams uh, and only four teams in the finals. Or sorry, only was there only three teams in the finals back then? It looks like it, actually. Uh, Beyond me. <laughs> Postseason results, Dallas or Kingston over State College. Dallas over Kingston. Did the Hepcats not 
so it was, it was only the top three records like the divisions didn't even matter there wasn't like a division so only the top three teams made it back then uh and dallas beat kingston 4-0 and state college beat anchorage 3-0 in 2025 so only four sweeps in the history um one of the most recent being Chicago being swept by Kansas City last year, and I hate to be the one to bring up the uh, the old old wounds, but um, <laughs> well, I, I think in know, this context. Funny thing is, I'm pretty sure this is how it's happened. But every time Chicago and Kansas City have played in the World Series, the number of games it took went down by one, so it went six five four. You can fact check me on that because I know you're looking at the index right now. <laughs> well, I actually just closed out of all the tabs. But... <laughs> oh, but I'm pretty sure that happened because that's something weird. So obviously the next time they would meet, the world would break because you can't go lower than four. <laughs> but I think we're ready. Predictions done. Go into game four. Yeah, well, let's let's do it. So uh, that means you're taking us into game once again with Stefano Chinapi on the mound against the hot-hitting Chicago lineup. Here we go. Game four. Chicago looking to complete the sweep. Lemurs looking to stay alive. Let's go. Game four. Stefano Chinapi on the mound, leading things off here for Chicago. Will be second baseman, Sacks Justice. Here comes the pitch. Justice going to grind one over to the shortstop for the first out of the game. I'm going to bring up Radiance Ham. Ham's going to fly one way high into right field. But Jaguar is there to make the catch. That brings up Lane. Lane's going to ground a single up the middle. That will bring up Shumi Hulkenvettel. Takes a big hack. Strike three swinging. No score here so far. nappy has been able to work around the hot bats. It's going to be Mitch the T-Rex on the mound, taking on Andrew Myth. Myth will be grounding out to the second baseman, Justice. It's going to be Ruben Ramirez, the center fielder. That will be a base hit into left. Lemurs with their first hit of the ball game here in the bottom of the first. Jet Jaguar grounds it to third over to first, though, for a ground out. Did not go for the double play as Ramirez advances to second easily. Lumpo Sullivan, though, will strike out, swinging at... Uh, swinging at ball four, it looks like so. Full count strikeout for Lump of Sullivan. So we hit at the top of the second now. Still no score. Designator hitter Atlas Gray going to ground one over to the third baseman. Slow rolling ball, but a strong throw gets him out at first. And Chovy. Chovy's going to lift one into left field. Hugs the line. Left fielder McGee is there to make the catch. Hayden Andrews. Andrews going to ground one third baseman. Quick toss off the rip there. Gets the third out. One, two, three inning for Chinapi. We go bottom of the second. It's going to be Ditto McGee do up. And it's going to be a ground out to shortstop for out number one. Miles Burrow, the third baseman. Grounds that right to Radiance Ham, who steps on first for out number two, Forrest Gump. We'll do the same exact thing. Radiance Ham getting their steps in as they run around the first base area. <laughs> Taking care of two outs in that inning on their own. We head to the top of the third now. Still no score. Donnie Applegate leading things off. Flying one out into right field. Brings up Jose 43 Sr. He's going to launch one over into right field. That one will go. Solo shot. Jose 43 Sr. His third of the series. His third of the postseason. What a World Series he is having. We'll bring up Sax Justice. Gonna watch ball four go. Make his way to first base. Brings up Radiance Ham. Ham's gonna ground one over to the pitcher. They're just gonna get the force out at second. Bring up Hudson Lane. Ham is off and running. We'll get there stealing second base. Lane's gonna ground one up the middle. Will Ham take the turn? He will. No throw, just hitting the cutoff, man. That's another run in for Chicago. I'll bring up Hulk and Vettel. I'm gonna watch ball four go. Runners on first and second. Two outs now. Hard hit ball by Gray. They go the short way to second base to get that third out. But two runs here 
And top of the third for Chicago will put them in the lead. Lemurs fans starting to sweat already here with a 2-0 deficit in the bottom of the third as Bonds goes down on strikes to Mitch the T-Rex. Lemurs are going to want to uh, make an impact here in the next couple of innings to try and uh, mitigate any damage that the Kingpin's bats can do. Myth is going to fly out, though, keeping Eliason on first. Ruben Ramirez, long fly ball into left center field, but it doesn't quite have the distance as Lane puts it away for out number three. We head to the top of the fourth. Chicago leads 2-0 here in Louisville. Poppy's still on the mound. Chovy stepping up. Chovy's going to drop one behind the third baseman into left field for a lead-off single. We're going to Hayden Andrews. Chovy is off and running for second base. Will be safe. Andrews hits one over to the first baseman, tosses to the pitcher, covering. Kobe does move to third base. Productive outs. High fly ball by Applegate into left center. Are they going to send Chovy? Chovy is sent, but a great throw by McGee gets Chovy out at the plate. What a throw. What a double play. Crazy plays at the plate this entire series. As Jet Jaguar will get a single to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Lumpo Sullivan will watch as Jaguar takes off for second and gets another stolen base. And Lumpo Sullivan will fly out to straightaway center field. Jaguar with his eighth stolen base of the playoffs. And looking for nine, but no, he gets gunned down by Applegate. Ditto McGee will fly out to right field to end the inning. So after Jaguar gets on base... Louisville unable to get him around to score as we head to the top of the fifth. Still 2-0 Chicago. 43 senior leading things off here. Ground ball to the pitcher. Chinapi makes a great throw there to get that first out. They'll bring up Sax Justice. He's going to fly one. Th shortstop ranges back into the outfield. Does make that catch over his shoulder. Reading Tam's going to drop one over into right field for a two-out single. They'll bring up Hudson Lane. Lane's going to fly one over into right field. Jaguar is there to make the catch. We've hit the halfway point of the game. Go bottom five. It's going to be Miles Burrow up to bat first. He flies it out to Shumi Hulk and Vettel in center field. Forrest Gump, the catcher, grounds that to the third baseman who throws on to first. Andrew's arm is able to beat him out in time for out number two. Barry Bonds, though, with a base hit into left center field all the way to the corner of the left field and center field walls. And he'll be on board with a double. Kyle Eliason, however, will fly out. So after two outs, Lemur's able to get a man to scoring position, but unable to bring him around to score. Still 2-0 Chicago. We get to the top of the sixth. Part of the lineup here facing Chinapi. Hulk and Vettel's going to ground one. Over to the third baseman. Good throw there. Gets him out at first. Atlas Gray's going to hit one right to the first baseman. who will take it himself for the second out. They'll bring up Anchovy. Anchovy's going to line one into left field. Good stretch. Pie McGee pulls it in for the third out. One, two, three inning for Chinapi. Still 2 nothing Chicago. We go bottom of the sixth. Mitch the T-Rex back on the mound. And Andy Myth welcomes him back to the mound with a single base hit into center field. Ruben Ramirez, the hot bat, high fly ball into center field. This one will be taken care of by Shumi Hulkenbettel. Runner on first for Jet Jaguar. He goes down on strikes. And now it's Lompo Sullivan, the first baseman, hitting 326 in the playoffs. But that average will go down as the fly ball right to Jose 43 Sr. is caught to retire the side. Heading to the top of the seventh. Still no score from Louisville, but two runs on the board from Chicago. Bottom of the lineup for Chicago. Andrews is going to drop one just in front of the right fielder for a leadoff single. Let's bring up Donnie Applegate. Salami Tsunami stepping in as the new pitcher in relief. Applegate's going to line one hard to the center fielder, Ramirez, for the first out. High fly ball by Jose 43. Center fielder Ramirez will grab that one, getting that second out. Lineup turns over as Sax Justice is going to ground one over to the pitcher. Good throw just gets him at first. Ladies and gentlemen, it is stretch time. We go bottom of the seventh. Chicago still leading 2-0. And 
And the leadoff batter for Louisville will be Diddle McGee. Flies out to Hoken Vettel for out number one. Miles Burrow launches that into right center, but Shumi is there for out number two. The second fly out right to the center fielder of the inning. Forrest Gump will go down on strikes. And a quick one, two, three inning for Mitch the T-Rex on the mound. And we head to the top of the eighth. Chicago looking to extend their two-run lead. Radiant's hand leading things off. Gets over the bag at third base. Stroll in for a lead off double. That hit the bag and jumped over the third baseman's glove. Hudson Lane's going to ground one up the middle. They're not going to send Ham. Just going to stop at third. Ooh, a great dive by Jaguar there. Going to be a sacrifice fly by Hulk and Vettel. Extending the lead to three. We'll bring up Atlas Gray. Gray is going to fly one. Hop just behind the first base bag. Second baseman pulls it in. Anchovy will strike out swinging. But it is now 3-0 Chicago. As we go bottom of the eighth in game four. It's going to be Barry Bonds taking on the new pitcher, Lil Smoothie Vert. Barry Bonds launches that into left field. But Lane will take care of it for out number one. Kyle Elias in the shortstop. Gets that past the first baseman and the second baseman. And the Lemurs have a base runner here in the bottom of the eighth. Andy Myth skies that into the first baseman's glove. Almost said the pitcher's glove, but overcame Radiant's ham to take care of it. Two outs runner on first. Grounder to second over to first. And the Lemurs will have three more outs left to tie this game up and make up three runs. Or else the Kingpins will win the World Series. Tsunami still in to pitch. Hayden Andrews going to fly one. Just <laughs> inside the infield. Second baseman will grab it. They'll bring up Donnie Applegate. Samson Price, the new pitcher. Rounds one over to second to first for the second out. They'll bring up Jose 43, senior. He's going to launch one over into left field. Just dies at the track. One, two, three inning for the Lemurs. Three outs for their postseason. And it's going to bottom of the ninth. And it's going to come down to the Lemurs bats. Can they wake up in time? Jet Jaguar will ground out to the left side for out number one. Lumpo Sullivan launches that one into right center field, taken care of by Hulkenvettel. And it all comes down to Diddle McGee. Three run deficit here for the Lemurs. And a pop fly into the glove of the second baseman. Sax Justice will finish it off. Chicago wins the World Series. The Kingpins are your minor league PBE champions for season 27. Congratulations, Moosey. Man. What was that? Finally. <laughs> Finally. Oh. After... Five World Series appearances. Uh, after after five World Series, or sorry, after four World Series losses. Here in World Series appearance number five for the Chicago Kingpins, they have done it and won it all. Mitch the T Rex gets the final win for Game Seven of the World Series. Little Smoothie Vert gets the save. Excellent pitching by Chicago. Stefano Chinoffi takes the loss despite a quality start. And Mitch the T-Rex will be the player of the game for the final game of the World Series. Uh, how do you feel, Moosey? What's, what's the emotions right now? I don't know how to feel. I've actually <laughs> kind of like started crying a little bit. Just because this is... I've been GM or have been co-GM of this team for six seasons now. We've, ever since I joined the team, we've made uh, the playoffs. And to get so far every time to come up short, this this means a lot. This this is this is just a culmination of everything. We get back-to-back -back general managers of the year. I still don't know how we won the second one, no lie. <laughs> but uh, it, it finally culminated in finally winning the World Series. All it took was not facing the Hepcat. <laughs> I'm happy about that. But also, I, I want to shout out the Lemurs management in Davey and Mitch Mac. You guys have been 
amazing GM since you guys got that expansion bid. Um, the branding is wonderful. You guys have have cultivated just a fantastic locker room. Um, unfortunately, in this one, uh, it seems like we were the Dodgers and you were the Rays, and we were just due for it. But you guys got a lot, a lot coming ahead of you. Um, I, I love my my teammates. Uh, you guys have done an amazing job updating and uh, really just creating a little family. Go crush fam. Uh, and Dag, we did it. I know you're avoiding everything right now, but uh, <laughs> we we finally did it, man. We we it took so long, but we we did it. You did it indeed. Chicago Kingpins are the World Series winners, four to zero in the World Series, having taken down uh, Dallas in the first round of the playoffs, three to one, sweeping uh, the Amarillo Armadillos uh, from the West Division, one of the two teams that got a bye uh, in the semifinals, and now winning against the Louisville Lemurs in the World Series. Chicago Kingpins 2043 World Series champs. And you look at the uh, playoff coverage in the sim. We have our series MVP as well, Jose 43 Sr. Uh, Enoch mentioned a little bit earlier in the series, why go for 350 TPE players when you could just bring in the 108 TPE? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. But Jose 43. The Wire ad and came up big scoring three home runs in the series <laughs> yeah waiver wire ad gets the series world series mvp with i with two home runs in the three home runs in the series i'm seeing one two three one in each of games one two and four uh unbelievable outing by jose 43 going uh looks like six for 15 with three home runs five rbis hitting 400 uh in the world series Unbelievable uh, World Series from the Chicago Kingpins bats, especially, um, were firing on all cylinders uh, in these games, propelling them to the victory. We're going to go ahead and start the upload. Um, and while we are doing that, we'll hit. Uh, I don't actually know that we can go back to the playoff coverage while it's uploaded. But uh, congratulations. Uh, to the Chicago Kingpins and to you, Moosey, for winning the World Series in your fifth World Series appearance in six seasons. Yeah, I'm afraid to go into the to the clubhouse right now. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you be afraid to do that? That's, that's no, no, there's, a a, there's probably right? a lot of there's probably a lot of screaming going on, and <laughs> that's the best part. <laughs> I know. I wouldn't know, but I I mean that's the <laughs> that's the best part I would assume. So wow. That's that's crazy. I I, I can't believe uh how well the Kingpins bats were just hitting in this entire World Series. You guys put together a great lineup. We we finally Let's broke do. the curse. <laughs> broke the curse. There 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 was a very funny uh meme that someone made you know the one with the three dragons yes yes it was uh kingpins in the regular season kingpins in the first and second round and kingpins in the world series <laughs> <laughs> so. that's awesome I, it, well that is no longer relevant anymore either um as oh. the curse has been broken <laughs> wow and to take down the 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 Dillos too, who you guys uh, historically in the playoffs have um, kind of met up with a couple of times. Uh, we go back to like 2039, lo losing four to one in the World Series against the Dillos, and then losing against the Dillos in the first round, three to two the following season. Uh, and then now you come in and and you sweep them in, in the semifinals uh, when they have the buy and the and the better winning percentage in the regular season. That's got to feel good as well, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, they they've been a, historically a really good fan franchise. Um, there there's a lot of GM turnover this year, so it's 
like all of these old heads that were hanging around and miners management are going to be gone and it's going to be really exciting to see how these teams uh like rebound into next season with the positional retirements of Enoch and LBG and it, it, mm-hmm. it's going to be weird walking in there and being like who the heck are you people <laughs> yeah yeah LGM's gone as well uh yeah. from the Dillas got a lot of minor yeah. GM turnover so and yeah it's... the the entire uh like it's just a bunch of new people like the entire Firehawks management is gone and so now it's yeah. KC and Dirk yeah well, it's it's and... going to be interesting uh finally we get to pick 10th in the draft <laughs> instead of ninth the last couple of seasons i know it's gonna feel weird having that 10th pick <laughs> so now you got you gotta do some extensive scouting to see who's uh to see who's yeah. gonna be left at 10 i know it's it's a very shallow class right now so if you know people like talk to friends family co-workers whoever get them to join this league this league is awesome Get Moosey on the recruitment team, please. <laughs> oh, jeez, no. <laughs> I do a terrible job. <laughs> we did a good job pitching it right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, being a Miners GM, I, I got to think, is, um, has got to be fairly difficult because, like you mentioned, uh, some of these players are going to be, um, are going to be leaving. Uh, like, Majors GMs, like, like myself... Are, are real jerks and you know call up all these all these like good players to, to, so you the lose worst. a bunch of a bunch, <laughs> what was that just the absolute worst absolute majors worst GMs. yeah <laughs> major gm's bad everyone spread that around um yep. <laughs> but yeah all these uh like great myers players are being called up some of them uh some of them leave for other reasons like maybe they go inactive but um yeah, the age outs and stuff like that. Yeah, age outs. Yep. Uh, yeah, it, so it's it, it, it's gotta be tough. It's really hard. It's yeah. A lot harder than you're. Everybody thinks being a major's GM is very tough, and that's because it, it is. I couldn't imagine looking at that budget sheet and figuring out contracts. And it's, it's very touchy. Mm-hmm. Like especially with all the cap penalties, I've seen the draft board. There's a yeah. lot of penalties going on. There's a lot of forfeiture. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> because of cap. Um. But it's it's crazy because it's like it's so much more management you think from the majors perspective, but the minors it's all about growing a great user base and putting that passion into other people so that they can go on and create um, great players and have a great time in this league. Um, you really only get your your players for two to three seasons, depending. Uh, sometimes you get them for longer. Sometimes they get called up right away, which is like the worst. Because it's like, oh, you just got drafted, and now you're called up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. But right. it, it all depends on the team that's doing anything. But it's it's a very rewarding experience because anyone can win in any given season, as well. It's true. Yeah, I, I can't imagine how uh, the amount of turnover just affects the standings, uh, like season after season. Uh, there's so much upheaval. Like you think of, um, you think of the uh, the 66ers now, the Firehawks, um, who had a really rough season this year. But you know, just a couple of seasons ago, were one like one of the top teams, and uh, like shuffles in the standings have to happen so much with uh, all of these players leaving, um, what players are staying. So I can imagine that. The minor league <laughs> LBG <laughs> says we serve at the whims of the major league GM. It kind of, yeah, kind of. And that's, and yeah, that's the why Dynamo's it... got hit probably the hardest in the last two seasons. Yeah. <laughs> Going from almost making the World Series to the bottom of the league, and that's just the worst. And I feel, but they're bu- they're building things back up, and yeah. I feel partially responsible for that too. I know they, you know, they were talking about um, Giuseppe Tosin, uh, Dr. K's player, um, when he got called up to uh, the Vandals. Uh, I know that they were kind of hoping that he'd be able to stick around for another season. So, um, I, I know how. And is it Bully AJ yet, day yet? It should be. Why is it not? <laughs> you got ten o'clock. I think that's I think that's what March thirty first or something. I forgot yep. that there's thirty one days in March. <laughs> yep. 
Enoch blames AJ that he didn't win in season 12. Hey, that was before, that was like right as I got there. You can't really blame me for that one. Mm-hmm. The Dillos, the Dillos can blame me all they want because of there was a, a whole incident with with, uh, with Bruce Buckley. But I mean, Dillos are Dillos have full permission to blame me. But I was there, Enoch. But I I, I wasn't really involved in the decision making all that much at that time. I had just joined as a GM to the to the Vandals. So, ah, uh, man, it's 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 tough for the. For the minor GMs, it really is. Yeah, it, it's probably the best experience that I've had like, in Simlings, just being able to be a general manager. Because like, I've tried in other, like, I put up for a very similar spot over in the DSFO. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get that spot. And then... If you know, you know what happened next. <laughs> I I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, but the guy who got hired had a tampering scandal. <laughs> oh, so that was a, that was a whole thing. But <laughs> I, I, I feel like the ISFL has so much more frequent drama than the PBE does. <laughs> it feels like that sometimes. I need but, so, so, people need to DM yeah. me ISFL drama threads because I need more reading material. <laughs> um, but LBG <laughs> is absolutely correct. Everyone, be sure to tune in for that major sh- stream tonight: the World Series Outer Banks Aviators versus the Indianapolis Apex, the defending champs versus the team that has that is looking for their first victory. 6 p.m. Eastern with LBG, Rabbit Sponge, and Hummus God hosting. Be sure to tune in for that as well if you're still sticking around in the chat during the upload. Um, I feel like this um, upload is actually taking longer than usual, and I don't know why. <laughs> but um, but yeah, the, um, be sure to tune in for that. And thank you for tuning in to this stream. Really appreciate all of you that are still sticking around in the chat. And thank you to the mods and the stat team and to you as well, Moosey, for um, for co-hosting. Yeah, thank you for streaming <laughs> this and uh, bring me all aboard. And thanks to all the mods and chat doing a wonderful job. <laughs> yeah. I, I I love DG's comment. File can't process Chicago when he doesn't know what to do. <laughs> <He> doesn't want to. <laughs> I can't take it. The the the, the the league has just imploded. I can't handle it. <laughs> yep, yes. we will be back at six p.m. Eastern for the Majors World Series. Yep, six Eastern. Yeah. I, I learned very quickly in the uh, in this league that it is very important to clarify um, the time zone <laughs> because otherwise you run the risk of uh, confusing a lot of people. <laughs> uh, let me see. It should be... Um, Got to finish the upload real quick and then we should be about good resim the whole season <laughs> why are we wait why are we resimming what, what do we do <laughs> you know that just sounds like more work for you <laughs> it really does <laughs> you know you know it's gotta fix everything now I mean, I wouldn't mind a season 27 resim. I don't think Moosey would want that, though. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my team didn't even make the playoffs, so resim might help us. Or you might go on a worse losing streak. This is true, but I'm willing to run that risk. <laughs> when you did not make, did not even make the playoffs, there's not much worse that you can do. Either you have a better draft position... Or you make the playoffs. <laughs> uh, Chicago Kingpin sweep World Series. There's the top headline of the draft or uh, of the index. I don't know why I said draft. <laughs> top headline of the index 
index has been updated. Thank you once again, everyone, for uh, for sticking around and uh, watching. Congratulations to the Chicago Kingpins and to Moosey, uh, the GM, and Dagumpa as well for uh, for both GMing a World Series winning team. That's that's gotta feel good. Up until up until next season, when who knows who's gonna win it? Because <laughs> as we said, minor's unpredictable, but. That's going to do it for us. Be sure to tune in 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight for the Majors World Series. Have a good one, everyone.